All right, so we're back to continue with the intrinsic cardiac conduction system. So you know now a little bit about other autorhythmic cells. You know the distinction between uh, this depolarization, repolarization, um, no resting potentials, uh, spontaneous sort of uh, depolarization. So now let's get actually into the anatomy of the intrinsic cardiac conduction system. So the first part of this system is going to be termed as the sinoatrial node, SA, right? SA node, sinoatrial node, also known as the pacemaker of the heart. So the SA node is going to depolarize at the most rapid rate, and it's going to be at about 75 times per minute. So it depolarizes about 75 times per minute, um, and we term that then as sinus rhythm. So if the sinoatrial node is sort of taking command, it's like the, the drumbeat, the drumbeat of the of the heart. Um, that's normal. That's that's what we want, right? At about 75 beats per minute at sinus rhythm. Sinus referring to the sinoatrial node. Back up a bit. So this would then represent our sinoatrial node, SA node. It says, you know what, guys, it's time to contract. So it beats, depolarizes, sends that wave of depolarization throughout the entire atrial myocardia there, right? So it depolarizes faster than any other part of the myocardium, hence um, generating the, the fastest rhythm, 75 times per minute. So once that wave of depolarization goes through the atria, uh, we have like a little traffic jam. Uh, if you've been ever on the interstate, you're driving and oh, somebody crashed your flat tire or something. So there's some lanes closed. It kind of clogs up traffic and slows down the flow. That's what happens here. So we're depolarizing all of these atrial cells. Now in order to move down into the ventricles, we have this sort of delay in this secondary little node that we call the AV node, atrioventricular node. So it's a smaller in diameter fiber, uh, fewer gap junctions, again, causing a traffic jam, a slowing of the signal, a little delay. This is important, it's necessary, and it's normal, right? A, a tenth of a second delay. Now, if for whatever reason the SA node is damaged or it's not doing its job, uh, the heart can still beat. The AV node can take charge. It's like the second in command. Right? So, uh, but its rhythm is a little bit slower. It only depolarizes at 50 times per minute. So um, normally it's not a factor. Normally the AV node is following the rhythm of the SA node, but if the SA node is damaged, then the AV node has to take charge. It's just not as good, not as fast, not as efficient as the SA node. So then we have this little sort of uh, bundle, almost like a, like a nerve almost, we call the AV bundle, atrioventricular bundle, or maybe your grandpa learned this term, the bundle of his, right? So this is the old fashioned term. This is a more modern term, AV bundle. This is significant as it's the only electrical connection between the atria and the ventricles. So the atria and the ventricles are separated by the septum, and they're also separated electrically from each other uh, by all this non-contractile tissue. The only contractile tissue, or I should say, the only conduction tissue that passes from atria to ventricle is this uh, AV bundle. And then once the bundle kind of goes into the intraventricular septum, it branches into two right and left bundle branches. They work their way to the apex and then up superiorly to the side of the heart, which we call then the Purkinje fibers. So uh, Purkinje fibers complete the pathway into the apex and ventricular walls, and they also can take charge. If the SA node fails, the AV node fails, the Purkinje fibers can keep the heart beating at a, a rate of 30 times per minute. Again, it's 
it's beating, but it's not enough to to sustain your normal consciousness, your normal um, you know functionality, right? So you would need medical attention, and, but at least the heart is trying to still do its job at that point. So uh, all that stuff now put in a picture form. So one, we have the SA node, fastest rhythm, 75 beats per minute. Um, second, we get into that AV node, which then transfers to the only conduction system between the atria and the ventricles, which is the AV bundle, bundle of his. Uh, and then we go to the bundle branches, right and left. And we start to work our way up into the Purkinje fibers on sort of all sides of, of the heart there. Right? So again, within the um, interventricular septum, we have those bundle branches. So again, we got to understand the anatomy of the heart and then we overlay then the conduction system of the heart. So in yellow, this non-contractile tissue that's just sending waves of depolarization. So um, we want it to work perfectly and normally it does. There are gonna be some problems that happen sometimes. We may have what we call arrhythmias. Arrhythmias are irregular heartbeats. Uh, the missed uh, signal, there's a just, uh, you know, where we should have it at rest, it's a little bit of a depolarization. This irregular heart rhythms may or may not be significant. It could be uh, affected by things like caffeine, um, just uh, emotional aspects, sympathetic system uh, influence. Uh, if, as long as they're not consistent, something we, we really don't worry about. Uh, we get into some more significant situations, uncoordinated atrial and ventricular contractions. Think of this as a band, right? A band with three drummers. Uh, normally, the third drummer and the second drummer follow the rhythm of the first drummer. But if the first drummer can't get the signal to the second and third drummers, then we're going to have different sort of types of contractions, right? So here we're trying to keep the rhythm fast. If that signal doesn't make it through, then we might have differing uh, rates of contraction of the atria and the ventricles. And again, that can, can be very significant. Uh, probably the worst case scenario then would be fibrillation. Fibrillation is um, not a contraction. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, you've been staring at the computer for too long and then your little eyelid just kind of goes crazy. It just starts kind of twitching, 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 or if you had a muscle twitch or something, um, that twitch is, is annoying if it's somewhere else, but what if it's in the heart? Instead of the heart contracting, what if the heart's just twitching and twitching and twitching and twitching? It's not doing its job. It's not functioning as a pump. So again, these uh, rapid, irregular, and I wouldn't even call them contractions. They're not really contractions. They're more like, like twitches. Uh, is useless for pumping of blood. And we have to defibrillate that immediately. Right? This is when you would use those, those defibrillation paddles, right? Clear, right? So trying to jolt the system, trying to uh, flood the, the, the system, get all the ions back in, in track um, and, and kind of reset then that SA node. That's the goal for fibrillation or defibrillation, right? To stop that fibrillation, that twitching event. So um, kind of linked back to these uncoordinated sort of contractions, we have then the, uh, let's say we have a defective SA node. So if the SA node is damaged, drummer one is gone. So uh, we may have to go to drummer two, right? The AV node, AV node takes over, but it's gonna be a slower rate, 40 to 60 beats per minute, right? So if the S a node is damaged and the AV node is taking charge. We call this not sinus rhythm, but instead junctional rhythm. Important term, right? Junctional rhythm when drummer two is taking over the beat of the heart. Um, uh, this can be caused by a defective AV node. Um, and basically, if, if we're not getting that signal enough down in there, 40 to 
60 beats per minute is probably too slow for most of you. Uh, maybe some of you are long distance runners. You have a slow heart rate that, that you can tolerate that. But for most average people, uh, 40 beats per minute, 50 beats per minute is not enough to, to keep your normal functionality. Right? So if there is a just a complete block, if the atria is not communicating at all with the ventricles, uh, we may have what we call total heart block. So you would then have, if I back up, you would have these uncoordinated atrial contractions and then the ventricular contractions are, are, are going. So again, two things that can be happening here. One, the SA node is working, but the signal's not getting to the AV node. In that case, again, you have the atria contracting and then the ventricles contracting at a slower rate. So two, the SA node is just gone. If the SA node is just uh, damaged, if it's just gone, then we have no atrial contractions and we would have a slow ventricular contraction at that point. So important distinctions there. So uh, this is one of my favorite parts of this uh, chapter, right? The electrocardiography. So once we, know, once we learn all that stuff about you know, the conduction system and all, and all these parts. We look now at the ECG. In, in, in English, we call it ECG. In German, they call it EKG, right? Electrocardiography. This is a composite of all the action potentials generated by nodal and contractile cells at a given time. So it's like an average of, of just all the electrical activity going on. And pretty good technology. It, it helps a lot in diagnosing a lot of heart issues here. Right? We're gonna look at three major waves, three major composite waves, the P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. So P wave represents the depolarization of the SA node. QRS, uh, ventricular depolarization, and T, ventricular repolarization. Right? And I don't know why they picked these, these letters, P, Q, R, S, T. It's just standard um, sort of letters that, that we use to distinguish this. If you like A, B, C, D, uh, whatever. But the standard is P, Q, R, S, T. Right? So again, our P wave corresponding to atrial depolarization. The Q, R spike, S, ventricular depolarization and then T ventricular repolarization. So again, when we talk about depolarization, depolarization goes along with muscular contraction. So here the P, the SA node depolarizes, so the atria contract. That wave continues, it's kind of hidden, but within the QRS complex, we would have atrial repolarization. As the atria are repolarizing, now the ventricles are depolarizing and contracting. And by the time they get all that depolarization wave, it's a lot more tissue. So uh, the atria is relatively small in comparison to the ventricles, so it's a much uh, wider interval. So we have ventricular contraction and then ventricular relaxation over here in the depolarization. So this, these waves are significant, right? And we look at a couple of things, right? The, the smaller atria, the smaller number of cells, a smaller chamber, smaller myocardial uh, abundance there, we have a small little wave, right? So it's contracting, but it's a small little wave. The ventricles, a lot more myocardia, especially on the left side, that thick myocardial level. So we have then a much higher amplitude. The, the, the spike goes a lot higher. And then the resting depolarization, kind of small, normally a little bit higher than the P. But again, there's a lot of variation in this here. So um, let's try to coordinate everything with the the electrical activity then correlated with the actual muscular contraction or muscular relaxation. So we begin here with the P wave. 
which triggers in depolarization of the SA node. Kind of spreads as, as we see that little spreading that spreads through all of the atrial myocardium and then that little delay to get to the AV node. Now once we start to send the signal of depolarization into the ventricle, we start to see our ventricular depolarization. So it kind of continues throughout all the walls of the myocardium. We have that little sort of flat line. And then we start then our wave of repolarization, which is the T wave. And then by the time all of the ventricle is repolarized, we have that little quiescent phase, that little flat line there. So um, this is basically the time that the heart is in complete rest. So after the T wave, between the next P wave, there is no atrial depolarization, no ventricular depolarization. So an important time in the heart. All right, so just a step by step again, I'll let you kind of navigate through that. So everything together, right? So again, you will have to know the waves and their corresponding activity that they cause within the heart. Right? So let me stop it here and I'm gonna get next into the actual ECG uh, sort of interpretations.